Good morning, remote learners. Welcome to Technique and Tools Week. I thought uh, this week we could focus on um, different drawing and painting tools as well as um, how to use them, some different techniques. So today we are going to party with watercolor. I have a little kind of travel set of watercolors um, and different brushes. Um, so I will talk to you about them while I show you them at the same time. So I have never really been a stickler for brush names, but um, theoretically it would really help to know why you're using which materials and why. So I thought maybe um, we could address that. So um, a round brush looks, looks like that. Okay, it's that one. Um, a flat brush is kind of like this. I mean, it's flat there, but the bristles are relatively long. Um, a bright brush looks like this. It's pretty similar to your flat brush, but the bristles are a little bit shorter. Um, a filbert, I don't have a great example of that because this actually looks like an angled brush and it did not start out like one, but essentially it's kind of a, a rounded rectangle towards the top. And then you move on to fan brushes. Um, I don't have any fan brushes, but it looks like a fan and they're cool. Then you've got angle brushes. Those are pretty self-explanatory, like here, it's angled. And then mop brushes, those are pretty sweet because you can kind of do um, large areas of wash with those. And then these are called riggers, but I actually call them liners, or in most cases in class, I say the little brushes, the detail brushes. So detail brushes, liner brushes, rigger brushes, um, but they're just like the really, kind of skinny guys. And then in terms of handles, I usually work on short handle, but I mean, like these are short handle brushes. Um, these are long handle brushes. Um, it's kind of more of a preference thing. A lot of people tend to work more with the long brushes with oils and acrylics. Um, I myself stick with the short brushes with acrylics and I'm super happy with them. So to each his own. But what I wanted to show y'all today was um, some different watercolor techniques. So I've got my cup of water. I've got my little travel watercolor set that I've already kind of added some water to to kind of dampen up the little um, palette because it makes them easier to work with. And um, they're different. Okay, there's dry on dry, which means that you're kind of doing a dry brush, um, not super damp, like you're blowing against a paper towel coming in with paint. And then... Um, you would still see kind of a little bit of striations. Oh, yeah, y'all can kind of see that. Um, that's dry brush. Um, dry on dry just means that you're doing the same thing with a different color. Oh, I don't know. This kind of, I think that's maroon coming in on top and you're still seeing kind of those striations, right? So that's dry on dry. You've got wet on wet, which basically means I would lay down either just water or value, okay? So like that, it's got a smidgen of blue to it. It's wet, and then I'm gonna come back in while it's still wet um, with a different color, and you're going to see how it kind of bleeds and runs a little bit. And in terms of how much or how little, it's just kind of um, to each his own. Like if you don't want it to bleed so much, then let it dry a little bit longer. If you want it to bleed a lot, um, go directly in while it's still wet. So that's wet on wet. Um, then you also have, it's also, I mean, it's essentially dry brush technique, but sometimes I'll take a really messed up brush um, that either I didn't clean out well um, or is just kind of, you know, time to go out to pasture and it's all dried up. And what I can do with that is get some really cool textures. This can really be helpful for stuff like foliage if you're doing trees and whatnot because it's not going to give you a smooth, consistent um, flow, but... Sometimes you don't want that. So you can kind of get some really cool effects using uh, kind of messed up brushes, basically. So here, we'll do it on top of that wet, wet on wet. You can kind of see what that's doing. Okay. Um, the other thing is liners. Um, I guess technically they're called riggers. They're pretty sweet. I love liners because, um, I think that's black. You can come in, um, you could do it, you know, wet on dry or just, you know, the way you would normally paint like that, right? Um, or 
doing that on top of wet, you'll still get a bleed, but not quite as much. Um, you can get some really, really cool um, textures out of doing that. Um, what else? Um, in terms of ombre, good gosh, I know y'all love your ombre. So when, when we were students, it was called um, gradient. Uh, but you guys called ombre, so I'm sticking with ombre. Um, for ombre, bre, all it is is working from one value into another. It doesn't even have to be in the same color family. Usually it is. Like, typically it's like, let's say you're doing like a sunset. You would start with like a, a yellow. And then while it's still wet, by the way, I'm using a, um, a, a mop brush. Start coming in with your darker values while it's still wet, right? So that it wants to kind of blend and bleed into that original color. Um... Then let's do, where is the purple? I can't really see. I need me some reading glasses while I do this. Um, coming into like, let's say, a, gosh darn it, there. <laughs> um, to that muddy brown, which is supposed to be a purple. Um, and kind of letting it bleed in into that ombre. And then you can even, I kind of wish I had paper towels handy, blot some of that up. But that's a way of doing ombre. You don't have to do that with a mop brush. I mean, I could use an angled brush right there flat, a filbert, a bright, what have you. Um, but it's just a matter of kind of layering your color. Um, generally with watercolors, you want to work light to dark. Um, watercolors are not necessarily super forgiving. Um, but at the same time, I think you can get some beautiful kind of, what is that book? That Miss O'Brien, um, like so much. Oh gosh. And I love it. I've got two copies of it. Um, beautiful oops or oops. Whereas, like, sometimes even our biggest mistakes become our, um, our biggest helpers. Oh, I'm driving myself nuts looking for paper towels while I talk. Here we go. Um, so, I was thinking that if you have access, see, you can even get textures with that. Like, how cool is that? Um, if you have access to watercolors, um, to maybe pick an object. It could be a flower from outside. It could be, I mean, a stuffed animal, a toy, what have you. Um... And if you have different brushes to kind of experiment with them, um, experiment with using, you know, wet on wet, dry on dry, wet on dry, dry on wet, um, ombre, gradient, um, mess around with what colors work together. Um, if you were trying to get kind of a, like a gray value, like a, an area of shadow, um, really one really great trick is instead of just coming with the gray, like if I'm drawing a red apple or sorry painting a red apple and I want to cast shadow like it is casting a shadow on my page what I can do is instead of coming in with the gray I'll do a makeshift apple oh, gosh that's kind of horrendous but let's say there's my apple all right um what you can do instead of just coming in with um a gray to do a cast shadow you can come in with its complement which um if you'll remember from class is the opposite of the color on the color wheel so for red just think christmas it's green makes a little bit of green with your red um that's a little bit extreme but um and that will give you that kind of that shadow feel without it being a, a pure gray gray um so using the complement of whatever color you're using um also, not working straight out of the tube. Like, generally, I suggest um, working with more than one color of red if you're making a red. Like, maybe you're adding a purple, maybe you're adding a yellow, maybe you're even adding a, a bit of a blue. Um, but I think with this, pick something to work from and experiment with some different brush techniques, some different brushes. And um, that's it, I guess. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, happy Monday. I miss you guys.